Okay, so this video is called Contracts in 2023. What's up fam, it's your boy Demir here, purveyor of all sounds underground. Man, it's been a minute. I took a little bit of time off to recalibrate as gigs and other priorities were meshing at the same time to just sort of figure out what it was I wanted to do. And this channel is certainly one of the things I want to, as much as possibly, try to continue doing despite gigs and other priority items that are taking away from my time. I appreciate you guys continuing to support the channel because it just continued to grow even despite me taking quite a few months off. You know, the subs kept increasing, you kept consuming the content, and I really appreciate your love and support on that matter. But we are back for another season and we are going to kick it off live with this particular topic which is called contracts in 2023. I realize it's not 2023 yet but we might as well anticipate it it's only uh, I guess we're into about two months being away from 2023 and there are some noticeable things that I think you need to be aware of as a DJ and producer coming up in the underground electronic music industry so why don't we get started all right so point number one the current landscape and I think it's going to remain this way for some time until some new technology or something massive in material changes things but the current landscape right now does not benefit artists contractually. I am seeing deals where the artist net sales in terms of what the royalty would be paid out to them after expenses like mastering artwork and PR and so forth are now instead of being 50 50 between the label and the artist it's now turning into less than 20 percent in some cases so that means the label is taking away 80 percent of all net sales and the artist you as the creator is only getting 20 percent of that which in my opinion is very much unfair but understanding how we got here is pretty clear and I'll cover that off in the next point but this is not not going to change. This landscape is going to be around with us for some time now because it's just the way it is. Point number two. So why do things look the way it does? Well, quite frankly, we only have one huge element to really point the finger at and it's streaming and accessibility of music. Streaming for its lackluster penny or fractions of a penny model has really cheapened the music business substantially in terms of what you as the content creator get paid. And and don't hate me for calling it content. I identify as an artist, but really and truly what you're producing at the end of the day is content to be consumed by people on various channels. But that being said, we're now in a time where people can readily access music wherever at any given time and what you are getting paid for it is based on fractions of a penny. And that being the case for huge sites like Spotify, and if you haven't watched this movie yet, I highly recommend you watch the playlist on Netflix. It it really describes quite accurately, in my opinion, what Spotify has done to the music industry. But what is most profound about that movie is the fact that they highlight very much importantly that music, the actual content is super important. And they had a very hard time trying to license it, it you know, the music itself from various record labels. And they're mainly focusing on the majors because the thought was if you get the majors, everybody else will come along. But that has come at a price to Spotify where the majors are owning a pretty good chunk of the platform. But regardless, all of this being said, this is how we got here. We have other people in the music industry saying music is a ubiquitous thing. It should be accessible. It is what it is. And I have no problem with music being accessible, but it should not come at the cost as to where the artist can, can't even dream of surviving on it. And point number three, so all this being said, what should you do as an artist if you are new or kind of in the middle of your career and just getting things kicked off or if you're a seasoned artist? And my point here stands for everyone, regardless of where you are, is to make sure that you consciously evaluate yourself and the value that you bring to the table in terms of the music, people that love your music and support you regularly 
be very honest with yourself as to where you fall in the marketplace. Are you a little blip on the screen? Are you someone where a lot of DJs and other producers are playing your music and actively charting and supporting you without you having to twist arms or hire a PR firm to get you that, you know, mark of support, so to speak? Really and truly evaluate your value where you are in the marketplace and let that dictate how you go forward with your contractual discussions when you're ready to sign over music. My thought on this one is bottom line, regardless if you're new and you know you're gonna have to take some hits or some losses, make sure at a minimum you are diversifying by offsetting any contractual loss in terms of signing agreements that only give you 40% or 30% or 20% of the net royalty to something where you're independently releasing music, where you reap all of the benefits of the net sales plus the ownership of the masters and publishing. And point number four is to not accept any bad vibes and what i mean by this is making sure you have a level set of values in terms of things that you just won't compromise on and first and foremost point i think everyone should have in their toolbox is the term of perpetuity it means forever it means for life in your lifetime you are signing something away to someone or an entity for them to own it straight out and you'll have no other opportunity to get it back unless they do decide to be kind and sell it back to you for a nominal profit margin. But in most cases, that's not the case. Content is really it here. You know, so because content is key and we've seen this over the pandemic where a lot of major artists and I would say other independent artists as well have signed over or sold their entire music catalog. And that's indicative of major labels and other labels and even investment firms kind of seeing the writing on the wall as it pertains to music and entertainment. You can only monetize what you own. You can't do that effectively when you signed away things in perpetuity to other people to own. So that being said, there is a reason why Madonna refuses to sell her catalog, at least as of now of this recording. And point number five, here is what I recommend for resolution overall. And again, this doesn't matter where you are in your career, whether you're new or in the middle of it, or you've been in the game for some time. Point of resolution here is to always demand a straightforward licensing agreement. It's less than two pages most of the time. It makes it very clear that you have a controlling interest or own outright the masters and publishing of whatever works you're considering to sign over to whatever label. At Purveyor Underground, we do not own anybody's masters, but we do encourage that if you don't have publishing set up, we will collect for you and split it 50-50 over the term of the agreement, which comes to my next point, is usually about 10 years or less. Any sort of agreement that takes you into 20 plus years, no matter what the fuck your manager or agent says because it's a good look, all that bullshit, it doesn't matter. They're not going to be around for you you know, 15, 20 years later, when you, you're you sitting in your home regretting, damn, I could be monetizing that jam from back in the day, and now all the kids or new and up-and-comers are playing that jam that you can be monetizing and making money from, obviously. So a licensing agreement really is where it's at. Two pages or less, it says, this is the person that's interested in buying your stuff. Here's how long the term of the agreement is gonna be. You still own the masters in publishing unless you guys agree to something else, which is fine. And if you do have to negotiate that, make sure you always have controlling interest, which is at least 51% or higher. So that's where it's at, in my opinion. I think Think content is everything now whether it's in music or you know whatever new crazy inventions that are coming up in terms of intellectual property and you sell that IP to somebody else to go out and develop and then they turn around and sell it or build the product in question like this is just where it's at it's all about being paid for what you produce above and beyond just getting recognized for it whether it's underground electronic music or you know, some other cheesy major EDM stuff. <laughs> and I think I'm going to finish off there. Thanks for joining me and checking out the channel as well as this video. If you loved it, make sure you hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. And it doesn't have to end there. I do have a growing Discord channel online where you've got 
I think close to 430 members and it continues to grow every day. So check us out and leave a comment. If you got some thoughts on this one, would love to hear from you. I usually join the conversation within 48 hours of posting these videos. Much love and respect to you. Peace.